Hello, it's Andy from uh, PCR Global. I'm out in Somalia at the minute, and I just thought I would give some of those who have messaged me a little bit of insight into the standard that is ISO um, 18788, as you can see here. So I'm Andy from uh, PCR Global. I'm a consultant for this standard and other security standards. And I just want to go through the framework. This is what I get asked about um, a lot. So ISO 45001, which a lot of people are familiar with, but this is sort of the lane that um, I sort of cut my teeth in and I'm really, really interested in. So this is ISO 18788, and it's a Security Operation Management System standard, or other words, a SOMS. And the most important, um, well, I, say, I shouldn't say that most important, it's all important to me, but you can really get a flavour for this standard when you um, look at its framework. Now, some of us would recognize that PDCA style model that's in most of the ISOs, but this one is really special and I really like this one. So we can see continual improvement in the middle as usually. We have the establishing the framework. I'll go through that a little bit more in a minute. Onto our policy, you can see human rights in here, which is really important when you operate in locations uh, like where I am now. Planning. Definitely the risk assessment, you can see legal and other requirements. Implementation, operations, competence, documentation. That's usually the part of all of these standards, um, clause eight, when that's quite specific to, um, to that standard. So that was business continuity. Now within there, we would be looking at business impact analysis, business continuity plans, and risk and threat assessment. Performance evaluation, well, that's back to your clause nine, isn't it? So. Nothing major in there to stand out. Exercises and testing. That's quite clear, as can be said there. But that's normal. That's what you generally see in that performance evaluation clause. Management review, um, which is recognisable. But I want to focus you on establishing the framework, context, needs and requirements, defining risk criteria. This is the big difference when we do security risk assessments, security risk and threat assessments. Remember, you've got to look at the threat before you can define the risk. And that's what people uh, often don't realize if they've been in the sort of the safety world, because it is different. And to do any of our sort of risk assessing, we can lay um, lean, I should say, on the risk management process as per ISO 31000. So I'm just going to talk briefly about this as well. The scope, the context, and the criteria. We just mentioned risk criteria. That's what we're going to talk about, focus on. Scope, yeah, well, as we know, risk risk management can be set. Project, program, organization, department can be set at any level. Context, internal, external, and the risk management context. But that criteria, again, really interesting term, risk criteria. In the security context, we just mentioned threat. So threat is different to your average risk assessing in the health and safety world. Why? Because this is intent. This is intentional. In the health and safety world, when we think of risk, nobody's, if you're working at height and you're, you're gonna be clipped on, nobody's going up there unscrewing the eye bolts. There's no, very rarely there's that intent. However, out here, there is intent because people would like to shoot you or blow you up. So when you are right in your risk and threat assessment, um, you've got to consider that vulnerability. So we need to think about the threat Okay, what is it that people want to do with us? Then we can look at our posture, look at their posture, then to look at our posture to work out our vulnerability. And it's from that vulnerability and threat assessment, then we can define the risk. And that threat and vulnerability sits in that criteria, the risk criteria. What's the organization got to do for risk criteria? This is in any standard that's risk-based. Well, they've got to define how they're going to come up with a significance of risk. That's why some people will say low, medium, high, five, two, three, well, however people do it, but you have to define, that's what that is about. How do you define the significant of risk? And, and you've got to come up with um, some type of statement or some type of process that the people on the ground can determine um, how much risk they are willing to take and how much risk they are not willing to take. So that risk criteria is important. In that mix, miss, in that mix, we're talking about the objectives of the organization. Yeah, we're talking about the actual reputation, the values, the vision. How am I going to determine risk? 
I don't want my company, I don't want my people to be hurt, I don't want my reputation to be damaged. So we get it back to that risk sort of appetite discussion, which a lot of people think is a, well, no, it's a difficult discussion. Some people try to put statements on it, try to, some people try to throw numbers out of it. What is that risk appetite that's hidden in that risk criteria? How much risk the company is willing or not willing to take? So I've probably gone on a little bit more than I wanted to, but ISO 1878. And just finally, just to say, my first ISO 1878 course will be out on the 22nd of May. I think it's on the 22nd and the 23rd. I'm going to be running it from about 1,800 hours to 2,100 hours. That's that's three hours per night for two days. There will be a learning platform and um, you will get access to that. That's it. So stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching.